Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Ajishafe. It's time to look around the world of sport where Nigerian Super Eagles really right now as we speak. They are on their way to Ghana, uh, if that is, if, even if they are not there right now. Well, the good thing is that the Super Eagles are ready. They say they are ready for Ghana. They are ready for the Black Stars. And the Eagles are not just making out as we speak right now. They jet out to uh, Ghana ahead of that big encounter against the Black Stars of Ghana on Friday. That will be the first story we'll be looking at. I'm welcoming you properly to the world of sport. Joining me to talk sport is Sharif Abdallah. Good to have you. Thank you very much. Uh, good good morning one. to you. Yes, uh, let's look at uh, the story trending now that the Nigerian Super Eagles are saying they are ready for that big encounter against Ghana. Well, the Super Eagles right now as you speak, they are already on their way. Let's look at the clip of their at least a departure from Namdi Aziku International Airport for Ghana. <laughs> I'm waiting for you, Labran. Sadiq. Hey, Sammy. That's all right. Nigerian Super Eagles. There. Well, we just have to appreciate the fact that the Super Eagles are right now. They are making their move already. We just give you that clip to let you see, really, they are prepared to do well. Uh, they have never seen so much commitment from the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Sharif, what do you see about this? The well, departure now? Uh, of course, as you can see, um, all preparations have so far been put in place. Uh, the Nigeria Football Federation, under the able leadership of uh, Mr. Amadou Melvin Pinnick, and of course in collaboration with the Sports Ministry under uh, um, Honorable Sunday Diary. Sunday Diary, have really been working tirelessly to make sure that the Super Eagles make it to the forthcoming uh, world biggest football showpiece. Mm. I mean, um, I, I monitored uh, uh, the president's uh, comment yesterday. That was he had a crucial meeting with. Uh, some of the executive board members and uh, directors of uh, the Nigeria Football Federation. And he made mention of uh, the World Cup is a serious business for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And uh, the world is looking forward to this uh, Nigeria-Ghana encounter because uh, it's always a fireworks whenever the Super Eagles of Nigeria are playing up against the Black Stars of Ghana. So I believe the Super Eagles are battle ready and at the moment, Mm. I, I don't see the chance of uh, Ghana, you know, upsetting the Super Eagles of Nigeria with the preparations that are put in place, with the commitment of the players. Before the, the, the game, uh, the president went round, toured around uh, the world where our, you know, uh, Nigerian players are applying their treats to, to, uh, to, you know, boost their morale that, look, I mean, we just have to make it to Qatar. Uh, Qatar is non-negotiable. You know, uh, we, we believe the World Cup is our birthright. Uh, even though Ghana is also one of, uh, you know, the biggest uh, countries as far as uh, uh, West African football, by extension, African football is concerned. But I doubt if, you know, Nigeria will not make it to the World Cup. Uh, hopefully next week by now, you and I will be talking about the preparations of Nigeria to Qatar. Hopefully. This is what I believe, uh, you know, the, the, the sky... It is too big, you know, for millions of birds to fly, as they say. But, but, but trust me, uh, the Super Eagles stand a very good chance. Uh, I mean, in terms of quality, one and one, 
the Super Eagles are better than the Black Stars of Ghana. But that does not take away the fact that, uh, you know, the players should take Ghana for granted. Mm -hmm. At least we've seen what happened in the, in the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. You know, we, we all thought it was going to be a walk in the park for the Super Eagles against uh, Tunisia. So that was, um, I mean, what happened in Cameroon uh, belonged to the past. But I'm just making a reference to it so that the Super Eagles will not be complacent. Uh, uh, so I believe they wouldn't be because... Even the even if the Super Eagles of Nigeria are playing against the under-17 Black Stars of Ghana, I doubt if uh, they won't take them seriously. Hmm. Well, we've been talking concerning Super Eagles of Nigeria. They are really prepared. They are saying they are ready They're for Ghanaian Black Stars and they want to make sure they win this. Well, we'll just show you that clip there for their departure uh, from Abuja to uh, Ghana. Well, hopefully they will do well as they've been talking tough and the entire squad are really saying this is not just a battle of jollof. It's not a battle of uh, music. It's a <laughs> battle on the pitch and they want to use their feet to make that particular battle be won by Super Eagles. They are still talking about Nigeria and Super Eagles. Another story they'll be looking at is the fact that they uh, coach uh, Auguste Leguabon saying, well, well Maduka Okoye can still join that particular squad. If everything's going well because he fell ill and if he actually feels better, he can still join that team. Well, uh, of course, Maduka Okoye is an integral part of the Super Eagles team since he made his debut for, for Nigeria a few years ago. And uh, it's sad that at this moment we will be without, probably without our best man between the sticks, because I still believe he's the best for Nigeria at the moment. Uh, but I'm not overlooking the likes of uh, Francis Uzoho, who is also capable, vastly experienced. Uh, remember, he was the man between the pipes for the Eagles of Nigeria in 2018 World Cup in Russia. So he has that kind of experience. I mean, he was in goal for Nigeria against Croatia, against uh, Argentina, and against uh, Iceland. So I believe... Um, uh, you know, uh, Francis Uzoho is uh, one man that can be able to handle uh, the uh, Super Eagles in the absence of Okoye. Well, we've been talking concerning Nigeria and Super Eagles. I'm still talking to you, Sharif. Uh, you look at uh, Okoye, yes, sir, we know uh, for now is the best, right? But uh, I, I don't want to look as if you're trying to force him to play this game. If he's not really ready as per health, you should just let him be. Absolutely. Like, that's why I'm, I'm banking on the likes of Francis Akwee Uzoho and, and, of course, uh, Daniel Akbeyi, who are all, uh, you know, battle-ready as well. Mm. Well, uh, from the way it is right now, we've been looking at Super Eagles preparation ahead of the uh, big one, a big match between Nigeria and Ghana. Well, to let you know that we speak right now, I'm sure they are in Ghana, and uh, we just have to hope. And Nigerian Super Eagles, this Super Eagles will fly high. They will fly high tomorrow. And hopefully on Tuesday also, here in Abuja at the MKO Abiola Stadium, Super Eagles also will also be fighting out against them. And we believe that they can also do it. Now, uh, if you look at our squad, yes, uh, a lot of uh, changes here and there. Some players have now uh, been called to, rep to uh, at least uh, stand in for those that couldn't make it due to either injury or illness and that. John Noble for Okoye, uh, Calvin Bassi, uh, sorry, Inus Mbonke for Wilfred Ndidi. But if you look at this score, minus the paper, uh, maybe looking at the other paper, performance-wise, do you think we are ready? Well, uh, we've all seen what happened. I'm making reference to a camera in 2000 and uh, the delayed Africa Cup of Nations uh, a few months ago. Uh, I believe the Super Eagles played one of their best ever games against Egypt. We had a very good game against uh, Guinea-Bissau. Uh, I mean, in the group stage, we, we, we had a very good game against, I mean, that, that was why the Super Eagles were the best team in the group stage. So this is to tell you that technical-wise, Austin Gabon has done a lot and we believe they can uh, do uh, more in this cracker against Ghana. Well, we believe they can do more in this particular encounter against Ghana. This is a big, crunchy tie 
between Ghana and Nigeria. And this is a very big war. In fact, it's turning a lot of uh, uh, issues now, not only <laughs> about football, now, but uh, you look at the musicians, look at the entertainers, everybody's really involved. Even I, I saw one particular uh, uh, report this morning saying uh, the, F, uh, the Ghana Football Association uh, say Nigerians are pretenders. No matter how they, they, uh, they actually pretend, they are going to fall against Ghana. But from the way it is, this is a big battle between these two countries. Well, definitely it is. You know, uh, there's always a ploy and gimmicks to get the, uh, you know, the better part of you, maybe psychologically or whatever. Uh, but, but like I told you, uh, player for player, I, 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 with all due respect to the Black Stars of Ghana, I don't think they can match us. And take a look at the FIFA rankings. Uh, I mean, Nigeria is currently the, the, the second or probably third best African team. Where uh, is the Black Stars of Ghana? I think uh, they are in a serious decline in terms of football, football-wise. Uh, we all know that. I think we shouldn't be pretending. But I just don't want to say Ghana are pushovers, but I believe the Super Eagles of Nigeria stand a very good chance to make it to Qatar. Hopefully, that particular chance will come to follow the Super Eagles of Nigeria as they file out tomorrow and also on Tuesday. We've been talking concerning that with Sharif Abdallah, a good one there. Let's talk about our own ladies now, NWFL match day 12, as we went down across different states. There are five matches came up uh, because the match between FC Robo and Sunshine Queens were postponed till Friday. Well, Nasser Amazon defeated Edo Queens 2 0, caught seal off Etano Dushima, uh, who scored one of the goals, and Shime Berem Okpara uh, scoring. The second goal there are confluence queens they pipped adamawa queens by a long goal uh, in that also in that encounter they just have to appreciate the fact that the lady favor ungocha scored that goal for them while the third uh, match ended in favor of oshu babes uh, in an away game they won two against pelican stars unbelievable they defeated pelican stars in calabar two nil uh good one from marcus grace and alvin Dias, who scored those goals for oshu babes and you have the other result in group b uh, looking at the group b result right now how it went down in the MWFL. Real Queens lost by a goal to Biosa Queens as Bavia Angels drew goalless against Rivers Angels. That's how it actually went down across uh, uh, five different stadia in Nigeria where seven goals were scored. Now let's look at uh, the way the table is standing in the women uh, football uh, in Group A where as it is, uh, well, Edo Queens are still topping despite, uh, despite uh, losing against Nasarawa Amazon. To let you know, Edo Queens have not lost in how many matches now, but now, Bansara Amazon have broken that particular record being held by Edo Queens. Now they've lost that game. Well, good one for Nasara Amazon. They are trailing with 21 points as Edo Queens are topping with 23 points. Two points are driven the two teams. Confluent Queens are third with 16 points. Nigeria Tells fourth with 15. Oshun Babes, who shocked Pelican Stars at home, are now standing fifth on the lot with 14 points. Adamawa Queens, nine points. And you have Pelican Stars, surprisingly, this team that really done so well when it comes to the history of football in Nigeria, right now languishing at the bottom of the table. With just four points. And now let's look at uh, Group B uh, quickly. The table in Group B, Bayosa Queens are topping after they did well in their game ahead of Rivers Angels, who are now trailing them with just a point, 21 and 20. And you have Delta Queens of Asaba standing tall there with 17 points. FC Robo Queens of Lagos, they are here to play their game. They will be playing tomorrow against uh, Sunshine Queens, who lost their goalkeeper, Elizabeth Johnson, to the cold out of death there. Rare Queens are standing fifth with 10 points. Abia Angels, and Sunshine Queens in that pecking order. Abdallah, you look at the way the ladies, uh, Nigerian footballers, uh, whenever they play games, when I watch their games, I always feel, wow, these are Nigerians. I always feel so elated. Well, absolutely. I don't think there is any country uh, on, in Africa that can match Nigeria as far as women football is concerned. So uh, uh, I, I don't, and this all boils to the fact that uh, we have a very good set up uh, uh, women league. And um, thanks to you know uh, the, the 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 actors behind this scene, mm. they've really been working hard tirelessly. We've produced some of the finest uh, women footballers on the continent, and you know we've seen some some teams. You know the likes of, of course, if you're talking about uh, uh, women uh, club football in Nigeria, uh, you cannot overlook the likes of uh, uh, Rivers Angels, uh, Delta Queens. Uh, Nasra Amazons. Uh, so I'm not really surprised that they are, you know, at the forefront when it comes to, you know, Group A and Group B of the mm -hmm. table. Well, we've been looking at the NWFL match day 12 as it went down across different states there in Nigeria. Seven goals scored 
and the teams are won are really happy. Nasrawa Amazon, they won at home, at least breaking that, uh, uh, the record being set by a Queen. They were really running away by saying, okay, I'm beating record, but right now they've been beaten by Nasrawa Amazon there. Well, they are trailing them by two points, and it's a battle between the two teams, Edo Queens, Nasarawa, Amazon. Conference Queens are also uh, they are, uh, are knocking at the door. Nigeria, Tess of Abuja, also there with 15 points. All these teams are really uh, making statements when it comes to football. And you just have to look at Group B, where, well, by us, Queens are also uh, uh, leading the power with just a point ahead of... All these teams, they are really, really very good. Good one there. Looking at women football in Nigeria, March day 12. As we move on to talk about another women football, but this time around we go to Europe as we talk about women Champions League as it went down just yesterday. Juventus, uh, they were able uh, to at least they played their game. The young feminines actually played, and it was uh, well a, a big one there. We we'll just have to look at the, the way it is. Uh, looking at the, the result there, uh, look at uh, Juventus. They were able to actually do well against uh, uh, Lyon. You just have to appreciate the fact that uh, uh, when the match was coming up, you look at Lyon. They have a lot of record. You be ah maybe Lyon we actually defeat them, but it wasn't uh, to be. Juventus did well. They were able to make the statement. And you look at Arsenal. Arsenal versus uh, Arsenal versus Wolfsburg. It match that a lot of people were actually uh, saying Wolfsburg will win, but it ended up in one one. Well, uh, Wolfsburg uh, uh, and Olympic Lyon, that's the feminine or female team, rather, you know, have uh, one of the best teams when it comes to women football uh, in Europe uh, and probably in the world by extension. So uh, it, it was actually one of uh, the biggest, um, you know, surprise package of uh, the Women's Champions League, if you ask me. Because uh, l looking at the likes of... Um, you know, um, uh, Arsenal ladies, you know, uh, getting a very good, uh, favorable result against uh, Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg, uh, of course, Wolfsburg uh, from Germany, Barcelona, Barcelona uh, from uh, that's the Barcelona Femini from Spain, and of course, Olympic Lyon, a uh, female team from France, uh, just among the few best uh, female football clubs in Europe. So, uh, to me, it was uh, really a good result for Arsenal ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, one of the biggest and surprise packages is the result against uh, uh, between Juventus and, uh, Lyon. of course, Olympic Lyon. Lyon are a force to be reckoned with, one of the best, uh, probably the best in France. Uh, well, you look at the fact that, uh, well, uh, I think uh, from the way it is, uh, nobody expected that Juventus be able to do well against Lyon. Uh, well, Lyon have really dominated football when it comes to football in France and also in Europe. But that's football at times. Sports leg now played. I just have to appreciate the fact that these ladies came out, they saw, they conquered. But for Arsenal versus Wolfsburg, that ended in a draw. Arsenal players should be, <laughs> they should be celebrating because Wolfsburg also, outstanding team when it comes to women football in Europe, they've been very outstanding. We've been looking at uh, matches in the Women Champions League. I've been just taking our own Nigerian Women Football League also match day 12 earlier on. Let's quickly talk about another one. But this time around, we're coming back home. Let's talk about an Nigerian uh, team called Katsina United. Katsina United uh, recently, they had parted way with their former coach. Now they uh, unveiled Usman Abdallah as a new technical advisor of that team. Abdallah has been with uh, Aimba at Heartland and a lot of other clubs in France. And not forgetting the fact that he, ha he is a man that knows the job of doing business in the MPFL. So Abdallah has signed a 10 month uh, deal with Katsuna United. Let's see if he can turn this around. Absolutely. I think um, without mincing words, he's one of the best coaches in the country. Of course, he has proven his worth with the Yimba Football Club and also with Wiki Tourist. I mean, I had a brief stint with the Kanu Pillars Football Club as well. Um, I mean, at the moment, uh, he's one of the finest, but, but, but I think this will surely be another uh, litmus test for Usman Abdallah to see if he can really, you know, bring his world of experience down to Kazina United because they've really been battling. Uh, I think at the, uh, a couple of years ago, they managed to be promoted from the uh, Nigerian National League to the Apex League in the country, the NPFL. So, uh, it is now left for Usman Abdullah. Having signed a 21-month contract yesterday, mm -hmm. he was unveiled like uh, we've all seen. Uh, we came across the story yesterday. I think it's absolutely a good one and a step towards the right direction for Usman Abdullah. So it's only time will tell that uh, if uh, Usman Abdullah truly deserves his um, uh, position. The, the position, exactly. Because 
Uh, he has done it with the Yimba. We've seen that. He had a brief, brief stint with the Wiki Atlanta Tourist. And Wiki Tourist uh, and all of them. All of, all of these clubs. So I believe he has what it takes to turn the team around. Uh, I mean, Casino United, with all, with all due respect to the team, I don't believe uh, it is a team that is vying for the, you know, uh, to be top. exactly to be uh, at the top by the end of the season. But I think their achievement will surely be to maintain, you know, their NPFL status at least by the end of the season. So let's see what this man has for Katsina United. Let's see if they can maintain that. Lisa, being in the NPFL, Katsina United appoint a rather unveiling uh, uh, Usman Abdallah as their manager, technical advisor, as we call it here. Well, the good thing is that that deal has been struck. And let's see what happens to that, that team. If you can turn things around, that team has not been uh, in the right place they want to be. And now they want things to get better. That's why they hire the man. And let's see what the man will be giving them as a good manager who knows his onion in the world of coaching. Now we move away to talk about a man that has been in a lot of issues uh, recently, but right now he seems to be getting his act together. Roman Abramovic, as we speak right now, is in talk to buy a Turkish uh, Super League club called Gostepe over there in Turkey. He's been talking with them. Well, if Chelsea is not going well, at least he can move to Turkey. And the news coming to us is that Gostepe could be the team that we buy because he's already talking with the owners and he wants to buy that team. Uh, that's a good one. It's well, a, bu it's a business we, we all know that it's really been a Tory time for uh, uh, the Abramovich. Russian Bologna, Roman Abramovic, you know, but it's not really been rosy for him, uh, for him in person and for the club as well, because mm. trust me, it's uh, uh, one way or the other going to affect the, you know, the psyche and the mentality of the players. You know, if, if the club administration or management by extension is not stable, it has a telling effect. On, on the players by extension, who are actually the main actors on the field of play. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe um, with his passion of, of, for football, because we all know this man is not just a Bologna, mm -hmm. but he's an ardent football fan. So uh, if Planier is not working for him, probably... Ambition he, well, Exactly. Good one. That's yeah. why, well, Abramovic is going for Super League club, Gostepe, in Turkish League very soon now. Maybe we'll turn uh, Gostepe to another Chelsea. Who knows? Now, let's take our last story as we talk about a particular player called Darwin Nunes, who plays for Benfica right now. Arsenal has been confirmed that they started talking with him and his agent. And if, if everything goes well, he could be the one to replace the vacuum created by... Uh, Obama Young living for Barcelona. So from the way it is, Darwin Nunes is the man uh, that Arsenal are really in talks with, with his agent, trying to see the Benfica player moving to Arsenal. Well, uh, Darwin Nunes is one of the most promising players so far in Europe. Mm. And uh, because uh, uh, his value has really appreciated, uh, if you look at his uh, transfer value, and all this, uh, thanks to, to his exploits, on the field of play. He has really been scoring goals for Benfica. The, the, and, you know, his impact has really helped the team to their current position, even in the Champions League. You know, so, so I believe um, his acquisition for Arsenal Football Club uh, will, will definitely have a huge advantage uh, for the club ahead of uh, the 2022-2023 season. Good one there. Coming from Sharif Abdallah, who has been talking tough concerning all the story we've taken. Well, uh, before we go, maybe let me hear your own prediction, Nigeria and Ghana tomorrow. Well, Nigeria and Ghana tomorrow, I think... Uh, uh, from from the look of things, from from the way I see it, uh, I just are you afraid? Can. Not really. No, no, no. I'm I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I think the the only gimmicks that the Ghanaians have really been playing tells you a lot about the Ghanaians are really scared of the super. Mm. That, I was even hearing that mm. someone was saying they want to bring the show of COVID nineteen, but I believe that won't be that uh, wouldn't be yeah, an issue yeah, right I, now. I mean, the, um, with the, they they refuse to release the name of their squad. You know, this is all part of their plans to get the better of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. But I see a 1-0 or 2-1 victory for the Super Eagles of Nigeria in Kumasi tomorrow. Good one there. Abdallah has spoken. Let's hope that will happen. It's their 1-0 or 2-1 in favor of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. That's it on 360 Sport. On Trust TV, I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.